Hi, this is Afnan. Over the years, I received a lot of uh, queries or questions regarding the siphon. And there are people that having difficulties in making the siphon to work properly. Generally, if the siphon is made as per the recommended specification, and it should not be having any problem. However, there are places uh, all over this world that might not have the material that I've been using or the sizes of couplings and uh, adapters that I've been using. So they will be having a lot of difficulties in getting the exact specification and they will be making the siphon to whatever available to them. The siphon premature cutoff. That means it does not drain from the grow bit fully. So you will have about five or six inches of water left and the siphon tend to cut off. Okay. From what I've been practicing or from what my experience is, that premature cutting off of the siphon is due to water starvation or restricted water outflow. And this is caused by a strainer that is not being done properly. Some people will make the strainer with only a few holes and with only a few holes you will not have enough water flow to sustain the siphon action and uh, what I recommend is you make a lot of holes as many as possible towards the lower part of the strainer in this case is roughly around the, the lower 20 percent of the trainer there's no reason or there's no advantage to make holes over the top of the strainer because as you drain you will need to go down and up and into the siphon standpipe having holes on the top defeat the purpose of uh, proper uh, draining because as the water goes down, those holes which is on top is no longer being used by the water. Water will be using the water, the, all the holes at the bottommost. Also with strainer holes at the bottom, you will have less problem of root, a plant root to uh, invade into the siphon because the roots need to go really down to really have uh, access to these holes and normally these holes will be in the slush zone of the grow bed and plant roots is not really uh, um, what is it want to go to that area because it's a bit wet so uh, what I recommend to uh, eliminate the problem of siphon premature cutting off is make as best as possible a strainer and have a lot of holes but towards the last 20% of the strainer. If some, some people will use uh, angle grinder to make holes a uh, slot it's okay as long as they make as many as possible and to let water going into the standpipe without any restriction so that's the uh, remedy that I recommend if you are experiencing uh, premature siphon cutting off The common problem that I receive uh, also is that 
difficulties in cutting off the cipher is difficult is difficult to cut off that means it have an equilibrium flow water coming in balance with the water going out and grow bed will be having a very low water and this is not a good situation again if siphon has been done properly you should not have this problem especially the final siphon that I designed because it works for the 25 millimeter siphon standpipe it will work from roughly 600 liter per hour water inflow to right up to 1200 liter per hour so the range of its operation is wide and I will always recommend that you use a pump which is somewhere halfway uh, between 600 to 1200 so most of the time I will recommend a 1000 liter per hour pump or inflow rate that will eliminate the problem of uh, aging of the pump which will reduce its performance and uh, if however if it's still happening that siphon is difficult to cut off with the design that I made what I recommend is to have its outlet been normally it will be at a straight angle as this but what I normally do if I'm experiencing a difficulties in cutting off a siphon I would make the outlet angle at 45 degrees don't do it more than 45 degrees because it doesn't make any difference the best is 45 degrees uh, to have the maximum effect of the siphon outlet okay that's uh, another remedy that I could recommend because normally with this kind of standpipe you should not have any problem with water cutting off because it will be able to operate over a very broad margin of water inflow People have been asking me about the funnel on my standpipe. How high the funnel need to be and uh, does it make any difference if you have a funnel which is high up or lower down? This is the standpipe I normally use. And what I usually practice is the funnel is as low as possible. If I can cut the neck of this funnel, I can make it lower, then it's much better. And to make up the height, I will use extender, things like this, to make up the height to ensure that the grow bit like uh, 12 inch grow bit or each in grow bit I use extender reason for me doing the funnel as low as possible is that as compared to this this is another another standpipe which have the funnel really high up then you use the, the neck of this standpipe to extend it to the highest mark what I found is that if you have the funnel as low as possible as water goes in it will have a longer drop into the funnel with a longer drop it will create a more forceful flow of siphon as compared to a funnel which is really high up because once the funnel really I have the water drop to this funnel is quite shallow it's, it's quite short so that uh, it's not that forceful and once you reach this 
the standpipe which is uh, straight it doesn't have any uh, more effect on this funnel at this point so although this design will also work without any uh, problem so far but uh, I do recommend that if you want to make a a funnel siphon that's as I designed it to be the funnel need to be as low as possible so that you will have the maximum effect of water dropping down into the funnel and causing as much um, force as possible to do the venturi effect of this final design People been asking me about reducer size. Reducer is the funnel that I use on my standpipe. What's the size or what's the recommended size is to use? This is a 25 millimeter standpipe with 50 to 25 reducer. This is a 20 millimeter standpipe with 40 to 20 reducer what i recommend when you want to choose a reducer is try to get as big as possible so that you will have the maximum effect of the reducer this is a 50 to 25 or the the reducer will reduce from two inch to one inch and you can have a reducer which is smaller which reduce 40 millimeter that is about one and three quarter inch to 25 millimeter so this is a smaller reducer and you can have even a yet a smaller which is 32 to 25 and uh, all this reducer will work however the bigger the difference between the two pipes the melt the better is the effect it have on the water uh, outflow you can have uh, all this size to be used and it works but the bigger as compared to the smaller the bigger is a better funnel and it will create better a stronger venturi suction and i will recommend to use the 50 millimeter to 25 millimeter however if you have a, a the bell which is small I would recommend that you try to get the reducer which is as big as possible that can be fitted inside the bell but you leave about quarter inch of gap between the reducer and the inner bell wall so that you will not impede any uh, water flow and causing problem. Okay. That's on reducer. Bye. Thanks for watching.